All right, boys and girls, in this video, we're going to work on lesson 2-4. This is the main math message or the main math lesson that we um, are learning in class. So if you're absent, you can use this video to um, catch up. Or maybe if you need a little bit of review and a little bit of extra support, um, if you were having trouble in class, you can use this video. All right, in this math message, we're going to be working on solving two-step number stories involving addition and subtraction. So some more word problems, but this time we're going to be talking about multi-step or two-step problems because we all know that everything in life isn't just one step to figure out the answer. Sometimes we have to do a couple of steps to figure out the answer. Okay, so for this um, lesson, we're going to be using the vending machine poster uh, in the student reference book on page 269. Now, you don't have, um, each person doesn't have a copy of the student reference book, but you can find that in the Everyday Math. Um, if you go online into your Everyday Math account, you'll be able to find that student reference book. I will also um, post a picture of it on my web page so that you can find that and pull it up. Um, but for this lesson, I have a picture of it on each page, so we should be good. All right, so let's just say, boys and girls, that you have 80 cents in your pocket. I want you to estimate. That means you don't have to figure out the real answer. You just kind of estimate, get a good guess. Do you have enough money to buy two packages of the same snack? So we're looking for two packages of the same snack. And then it wants to know which snack. So I'm going to go over here to the vending machine poster. Remember, we've got 80 cents in our pocket, and it wants to know if we have enough to buy two of the same snack, and you're just going to estimate. So maybe pause the video so that you can still see this vending machine poster, and go ahead and see if there's, two if there's any snacks that you can buy two of them with that 80 cents in your pocket. You are going to need some scrap paper or a whiteboard, um, and here in a little bit, you're also going to need your workbook. So you might want to also pause and grab those things as well. Okay, so looking at each of the snacks, hopefully you have done this work on your own, but let's look at each of the snacks. If we bought crackers, and I know some of these snacks are going to be real hard for you to be able to see um, on your screen, but this here is crackers, and so the crackers cost 30 cents estimating would you be able to buy two packages for 80 cents and this one should be really easy for you to estimate because 30 plus 30 is 60 um, it's already an easy number so you didn't even have to change that number to estimate so you definitely have enough to buy crackers okay because the crackers 30 cents plus 30 cents we know equals 60 all right how about the peanuts All right, sorry about that. If you heard those announcements come on, I had to pause my recording for a little bit while the um, morning announcements came on for the middle school. All right, so let's look at the peanuts. The peanuts cost 55 cents a pack. So 55 plus 55 might not be as easy of a number, so we could round that to 60. And so 60 plus 60, do you have enough with only 80 cents? And so no, peanuts you cannot buy because already 60 cents is almost 80 cents so you can't buy two packs okay same with the pretzels those pretzels are almost 80 cents so there's no way you're gonna buy um, two packs guys this is called estimating where you're just kinda looking at those prices and kinda making a quick guess okay now raisins um, when you look at the price of the raisins they're 45 cents if you're looking kind of at the 40 40 plus 40 is 80, but then don't forget, you've also got that 5 cents. So really, you would be rounding that up to 50. 50 plus 50 would be a dollar. You don't have enough for raisins. Okay, looking at rice cakes, these rice cakes are 50 cents. And um, if you do 50 plus 50, you know that's a dollar, so you don't have enough for rice cakes. Um, looking at a bottle of water, that bottle of water is almost 80 cents already, so you definitely don't have enough to buy two bottles of water. Um, I believe this is granola. I know it's really hard to see, but um, this is granola here at 40 cents. 40 plus 40 equals exactly 80, so you definitely can buy that granola. 
um, sunflower seeds, 60 cents plus 60 cents, that's already 120 cents or $1.20. So you can't buy sunflower seeds. Men's are 35 cents. So if you, even if you round that up to 40 cents, 40 plus 40 <clears throat> equals 80. And so this is actually less than 40 cents. So you know you definitely have enough to buy those mints. And then looking at cheese sticks, 25 cents plus 25 cents. Well, we know that two quarters, 25 and 25 is 50. And so we have enough to buy the cheese sticks. So you could have bought cheese sticks, mints, granola, and the crackers. All right, so now let's look at this next problem. What if I wanted to buy one bag of peanuts and one box of pretzels? How much would that cost? So go ahead, pause the video, and figure that out. If you're having a hard time seeing, this is the peanuts for 55 cents. And this is the box of pretzels for 65 cents. So when you put those together, 55 Oh, excuse me, I had a sneeze. 55 plus 65, when you put those together to add them up, now, different strategies here, guys. You can use whatever strategy works for you. Um, at home, your parents might have you doing this strategy. If you understand it, great, you can use that strategy. Here in class, we're not to that yet. We'll get to it. Um, I would prefer that you use either drawing base 10 blocks, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? When we add those together, we can put these 10 ones all together and make a 10. So we have uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, or 1 dollar and 20. So we can either write that 120 cents or we can write that 1 dollar and 20 cents. We don't write the dollar sign and the cent sign when we write that. Um, I see a lot of boys and girls, they want to write the dollar symbol and the cent symbol. We don't do that. Okay, another strategy you could have used, you could have put the tens together, 50 plus 60, 5 tens plus 6 tens is 11 tens. Then you could put your 5 plus your 5 together, those are your ones. And then when you add those two numbers together, you've got 120. Again, 120 cents, or you could put that decimal in there with your dollar sign. Anything over here on this side of the decimal are your dollars, and anything on this side of your decimal are your cents. All right, let's look at the next problem. This time you're going to buy one package of mints, these are the mints for 35 cents, and one package of granola. These are the granola for 40 cents. So we're going to buy one package of each. Go ahead, pause your video, work that out. All right, this one was actually an easy one. We're going to have the 40 cents for the granola, we're going to have the 35 cents for the mints, and we're just going to add those two together. And remember, it doesn't matter if you do 40 plus 35 or 35 plus 40. Addition has the turnaround rule. So you can add those in either order. It really does not matter. This one here is actually an easy one to add because, look, one of our numbers ends in zero. That makes life really easy because the only thing we have to worry about is adding on four tens to this number. So three tens plus four tens is seven tens, and then we just put our one back our ones back on so we have 75 cents 75 cents can be written like that or you can write it with a dollar sign that would be zero dollars and 75 cents so you can write that either way all right looking at the next problem it says one package of raisins and one package of rice cakes so we've got our rice cakes here for 50 cents and we've got our package of raisins for 45 cents. Go to pause the video, figure that one out. Okay, again, this one is a really easy one to add. Anytime I'm adding a number that ends in zero, it makes life really easy because all I'm doing is adding on five tens to this number. So I already have four tens, 
plus 5 tens is 9 tens, and then I just put my ones back on. So I have 95 cents. Or again, you could write that with a dollar sign. That would be zero dollars and 95 cents. All right, so now we're going to do some multi-step problems, problems that's going to take us more than one step to figure out. So let's look at this problem. What if we buy two packages of crackers and one package of sunflower seeds? So I'll find our sunflower seeds here. Those are 60 cents if you can't see them. Sunflower seeds are 60. I'm going to put 60 cents just right over top of that word. And two packages of crackers. Now the crackers are 30 cents each. So I'll just put a 30 cents over there. You're buying two of those packages. Go ahead and pause the video and see how you would figure that one out. Okay, now this one kind of takes two steps to figure out because first you had to figure out what two packages of crackers would be, okay? You know what one package of crackers would be, but you had to do two packages. So you could either do 30 plus 30, which equals 60, or you could have said two groups of 30, and that might seem like a really big multiplication problem, but remember, when we're multiplying by two, all we have to do is take that other number and double it. So it's the same thing as saying 30 plus 30. So those two packages of crackers equal 60 cents, and now I know that one package of sunflower seeds is 60 cents, so now I have to do that part of the problem. So I know my crackers cost 60, plus my sunflower seeds cost 60, and so 60 plus 60, remember what we've been learning in class, both of these numbers end in zero. I can ignore the zero for a minute, just do my 6 plus 6 is 12, and then I'll just put my zero back on. Okay, so this problem took two steps. First, I had to figure out what two packages of crackers were, and then I had to put those two um, amounts together. Now this is 120 cents, or you could write that 120 cents is the same thing as one dollar and twenty cents. Remember, 100 cents is a dollar. All right, so let's look at this one. It wants to know what costs more: two packages of mints or three packages of cheese sticks. So it wants to know what costs more, but it also wants to know how much more? All right, so first let's figure out what two packages of mints would be. I'm going to label this mints so I can keep track, and I'm going to find my mints here. Um, here's my mints. They're 35 cents each, and it wants to know two packages of mints, so I have to do 35 plus 35. And then it wants to know three packages of cheese sticks, so I'm just going to abbreviate for cheese sticks here, and I'm going to do my three packages. Cheese sticks are 25 cents each, and I want three packages, so I'm going to have to add all three of those. Okay, pause the video, figure out how much each of these things cost. All right, looking at my mints, I know that 30 plus 30 is 60, and I know that 5 plus 5 is 10, and so when I put those together, I've got 70 cents for the mints. Remember, guys, when you're doing this strategy here, you've got to make sure you're adding the 10s together and you're adding the 1s together. Be real careful so you don't mix that up. And then for my cheese sticks, this should have been really easy. Think of quarters. If your mom gives you three quarters for a snack, how much money do you have? 25 50, 75. So you've got 75 cents for the cheese sticks. So the first part said, what costs more? So now that you've done all of the work, which one costs more? The cheese sticks, right? But then it says, how much more? Remember we talked the last couple of days with word problems. When you hear how much more, how much less, how much fewer, how much greater, you're comparing two numbers. When you're comparing two numbers, you're finding the difference. So I'm comparing these numbers. I'm finding the difference. That's really a subtraction problem. 75 minus 70. 
okay? You know me and subtraction. I would rather start with the small number and count up to the big number. So 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, right? Or really, that was a pretty easy one because one ends in zero, one ends in five. So the difference is five cents. So when you're answering this question, you had to do a few different steps here. First, you had to add together your mints. Then you had to add together your cheese sticks to find out the first question, what costs more. And then you had to subtract those two to find out how much more. All right, how about this one? I want you to buy five packs of crackers. And it says there are two crackers in each pack. You eat three crackers. How many do you have left? So let's look at this problem again. You buy five packs of crackers. Okay. Now this time it's not about the money. This time it's about how many crackers are in there. Okay. So we don't even have to worry about the money. We buy five packs of crackers and it says there's two crackers in each pack. If I just start drawing a picture of that, remember draw a picture if you're not sure what to do. I have five packs of crackers. There's two crackers in each pack. And then I'm going to eat three crackers. How many do I have left? So guys, if I'm eating three crackers, then, well, I ate two of these ones. And I ate just one of these. So what do I have left? Right. I want you to look at the math that you did. If I asked you to write a number model for everything you did in this problem, what did I do first when I started solving this problem or drawing this picture? First, I drew five groups of two. Right? That's a multiplication problem. When I'm adding the same number over and over and over and over again, that's repeated addition or multiplication. So five groups of two, well, if you count that two, four, six, eight, ten, or I know that five times two, I can also just count by fives two times, five, ten. So I have ten crackers. But then if I'm eating some, what kind of math are you doing when you're eating some? And when you see that word left, we know we're going to do what kind of math? Well, we're going to do subtraction. So I have my ten crackers. When I subtract the three that I ate, what... How many crackers will I end up with? And so seven crackers should be your answer. <clears throat> All right, so now here's what I want you to do. I want you to go ahead and get out your workbook, and I want you to turn to page 41 in your workbook, and I want you to go ahead and solve these problems, and then turn the video back on, and we will go over those problems. Okay, so page 41. Now, you don't need that poster that says how much things cost. This time, what you're going to need is it says a package of rice cakes contains six rice cakes. This is going to be important for helping you to solve these two problems because both problems are about rice cakes. You're going to need to know that a package of rice cakes has six rice cakes in them. All right, go ahead and pause the video and then turn it back on so we can go over it. All right, let's go over these problems. It says you have two packages of rice cakes, and then you eat four rice cakes. How many rice cakes are left? Again, look what I see here. It's telling me I have two packages, so that kind of tells me when we're talking packages, it's telling me how many packages. I'm probably going to do some multiplication or some repeated addition. And then also when I see that I'm eating something and I see the word left, I know that there's going to be subtraction in there somewhere too. So if I have two packages of rice cakes, now it says that each package has six rice cakes, right? What's my number model for what I did first? Well, first I had two groups of six, and how many rice cakes would that be? That would be 12, right? I know that when I multiply by 2, I take the other number and double it. Um, 6 plus 6 is 12. So that was step 1. I had to figure out how many rice cakes I had. Step 2 is I'm going to eat 4 of those rice cakes. So I'm going to bring that 12 down, 
and then I'm going to eat four of them. Well, that's subtraction, right? And when I do 12 minus 4, what does that give me? You guys always freeze up when you see a subtraction problem. Remember, the easiest way to do it is start with the 4 and count up to the 12. Okay, so you have 8. So your answer then, it wants to know how many rice cakes are left. 8 rice cakes are left. All right, now looking at number 2. It says you buy 5 packages of rice cakes. And you give 15 rice cakes away. Give away. That's a very big clue, isn't it, of how, uh, of what operation you're going to do. How many rice cakes do you have now? All right, so first, if I start drawing a picture, I, have five, I buy five packages of rice cakes. So here's my five packages. Now I had to go back up to those directions. It said that each package has six rice cakes. Right there is my first step. So my very first number model should be five groups of six. And then how much does that equal? Now, guys, you can either add the six plus the six plus the six plus the six plus the six, or now that you know it's five times six, remember, we have a strategy for times five. If it's times five, we can hold up six fingers and count by fives. So five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Right? We can either add up all these sixes or we can just count by fives. So my answer is 30. Five times six is 30. Now that tells me how many rice cakes I have, but now my next step says I give 15 rice cakes away. So I know that's subtraction. So step two is I have my 30 rice cakes. I give away 15. And then what is left? So 30 minus 15, this should be one that's easy to do in your head. Think of the clock. Remember our clock exercises? 15 plus 15 is 30, isn't it? So if you're starting with 30 and you take away 15, you're going to have 15. So your answer should have been 15 rice cakes. And guys, the number models might have thrown you. Sometimes it, it's a little tricky when you have to figure out number models for more than one step. So just take it step by step. What did you do first? Write that number model. Then what did you have to do? And write that number model. Later on this year, we're actually going to learn how to write two-step number models inside of one problem. It's going to be way cool, and it's going to knock your socks off. But for right now, we're just going to write two different number models. All right. All right, and now this, the try this problem. It says for everyone in your class to have one rice cake, how many packages would you need? So you've got to think about how many kids we have in our class. Now, depending on what year you're watching this video, um, there's going to be different amounts of children. But I'm going to go ahead and use how many kids I have this year, which is a low number. And we have 18 children in our class. So now how many packages of rice cakes would I need so that I could give one to all the kids? Pause this, and I want you to think about how you would figure out this problem. OK, did you try to work this out? So I know each package of rice cakes has six. So if I bought one package, that's six rice cakes. Is it enough? Well, no, it's only six. If I bought another package of six, do I have enough rice cakes? Okay. Nope, that's only 12, right? 6 plus 6 is 12. So I'm going to buy another package of rice cakes. Now do I have enough? Well, 6 plus 6 is 12, and 6 more is, well, now I have 18. I had 6, 12, 18 when I'm skip counting. So it's going to take me three packages. Now let's just say, because a lot of times I have more like 20 students. So let's say I did have 20 students, and I wanted to know how many packages. Would three packages cover it? No, I would have to buy another package, right? And so I'm going to buy another package of six. How many rice cakes do I have now? Well, if you add another six onto 18, now I have 24. It's more than what I need. But if I want to make sure everybody gets one, sometimes you're going to have to have more packages and you're going to have to have some left over. Okay, so if I had 20 children, I would have to have four rice cakes. 
And then it says, would there be any leftover rice cakes? Well, yeah, here there would be four left over. Okay, whoops, I guess this is where it wants me to say yes. And there would be four rice cakes left over. Now, guys, if you were doing the 18 children, we didn't have any rice cakes left over, did we? Because three packages was exactly 18. So it really just depends on how many kids we have in our class. Now, if I were to write this number model then, um, for this problem, I'm just going to stick with this last one that I did. First, I did three, whoops, nope, I actually had four groups of six, didn't I? Four groups of six. And when I did four groups of six, that was 24. And then to know how many rice cakes I had left, I would have taken that 24 minus the 20 kids, and I would have had four left over. All right. All right, boys and girls, that is it for um, lesson, what are we on here? Lesson 2-4. That is all we have for that lesson. There is another practice page, and it is about rounding. We've already done rounding on a number line, but I think I'm going to do that on a separate video this time. All right. Catch you next time.